A lot of companies and brands are coming forward and speaking out against racism. And that's awesome! Now usually, people avoid brands they find out are racist. I don't think people are avoiding brands just because they haven't announced they're not racist. I don't think anybody is at the store like, hmm, Legos. I don't know where you stand. Actually, we do know where they stand. I thought I just made this shit up. I tried to brainstorm the most random ass brand I could think of. They donated $4 million to organizations supporting black children. Hell yeah, Legos. I might actually buy some for myself right now. I didn't even like them much as a kid, but maybe 32 is the age in my life that I start to get into Legos. Considering all of this, it is worth pointing out that Slinky is unusually quiet. I looked them up and it turns out they don't even have any social media pages at all. How convenient. Okay, you gotta check this next one out. These are dogs. Dogs don't treat each other differently because their fur is a different color. We could all learn something from dogs. Well, there you go. Racism explained leaving out the 400 years of oppression and systemic racism, of course. No, seriously, I know that the person who posted this has their heart in the right place. My only issue with this is that it's just oversimplifying racism. This is how you teach racism to a five-year-old. Well, a white five-year-old. Also, dogs don't benefit from a racist dog system. If they only gave the white dogs the good milk bones, that might create some friction in the dog community. Also, dogs can't physically see color the way that we can. I love dogs, but people act like them not seeing color makes them morally superior, when in reality it's just a physical disability. And even though this post is about dogs, someone in the comment section just had to chime in and say, Cats too! Shut up you all lives matter cat loving bitch! Ancestry.com also put out a statement, which to me is funny enough by itself. What, are people gonna use some third-party dollar store Ancestry lookup option where they just Google your last name and check out all your Facebook relatives? Now let's think, what have they actually done to combat racism? Well, they have shown a lot of white people that their family tree is rooted with racist people, or what they call a few bad apples. So what's your point, Jeff? Good question, Jeff. Now, there is no 100% ethical consumption under capitalism. However, that is not an excuse for us to just spend our dollars however and wherever we want. Rather, that is a challenge for all of us to consider spending less of an effort in avoiding evil corporations and more of an effort in supporting black-owned businesses. Many corporations around the country underemploy black people. An article put out by Harvard Business School cited a study done by Stanford and Toronto universities. The researchers created resumes for black and Asian applicants and sent them out for 1,600 entry-level jobs. Some of the resumes included information that clearly pointed out the applicant's minority status, while others were whitened or scrubbed of racial clues. For people not blind to racism, the results were not surprising. Employer callbacks for resumes that were whitened fared much better in the application pile than those that included ethnic information, even though the qualifications listed were identical. 25% of black candidates received callbacks from their whitened resumes, while only 10% got calls when they left ethnic details intact. What's crazy is that I could list these statistics showing racial injustice and racial inequality all day. But why do these numbers even have to be mentioned? Almost every black person in America has a story about being harassed by the police and racism they've experienced in the workplace. Isn't that enough just believing the overwhelming majority of black people?